Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite, and in today's tutorial, I want to dig really deep into Adobe Camera Raw's noise reduction features, which are very similar to those features that are in Lightroom, if you'd like to follow along there. But what I want to show you is how to reduce noise in either images with extremely high ISOs or areas in your photograph where you expand the dynamic range in those shadowy areas and you get these really crunchy noise things here. So here is the before and we've got some really crunchy deep noise in there and here is the after. We refined it really well and the settings that we use here look extremely high but we're doing them deliberately to get the most detail out of our image without sharpening our noise. So whether you're shooting in high ISOs or you're trying to recover shadows in your images, you're going to come up with noise. So in this photo, not the greatest photo at all, actually exactly what I did was I walked over to that door over there, I opened it up and I took a shot of outside with the whole inside at about a negative one exposure value. So the inside is really dark and the outside is bright. I had my focal point right here on this test target that you see on the wall. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my shadows and my exposure so I can start to even out this image so we can bring about that noise. Again, this is not a perfect photograph and that's not what this is meant to be for. This is meant to learn. This is meant to learn how to reduce noise in Adobe Camera Raw. Okay, and you can probably do the same thing in Lightroom here because the controls are practically the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and press auto. I'm going to see what Photoshop wants me to do here. Then I'm going to boost up those shadows a little bit so I can even out my exposure between what's outside and what's inside. I may even go as far as to drop those highlights in the back there. Okay. So I'm kind of reversing the exposure here. And when you notice what we, when we do that, the, this area here gets really, really noisy. And the further we bring up those, uh, that exposure, the, noisier it gets okay so i'm going to bring that down to about 2.0 okay so we're going to increase that exposure value by about two we'll bring down these shadows just a little bit so i'm going to go and i'm going to make this fit in view and i'm going to go over here into the detail section and this is where you reduce noise so what i did for this tutorial before i started was i reduced all of the sharpening and all of the noise reduction because what we're going to do is not just look at noise reduction we're going to dissect it so that we can actually understand it and use it on our images all right that's the beautiful thing so here first things first let's start with our noise reduction okay we're not going to do anything with sharpening right now because we don't want to sharpen our noise because if we turn on sharpening right now we'll essentially be battling the sharpening with the noise reduction so do noise reduction first then hop up into sharpening so we're gonna look at all of these different sliders and what they do, because I know I used to be a victim of this. I used to just go, okay, slam, let me put that up to about 52. Let me put the luminance detail to about here. Let's maybe reverse those so I don't go too noisy. Oh, that's it, I'm done. Well, that's not exactly how that works, okay? So let's go ahead and reduce all these and we'll zoom in to the test target that we had as our focal point. So we're zoomed into that test target. Let's go ahead and move up this luminance. If you move up the luminance, you'll notice that that starts to kind of take that crunchy noise and just start to pull it all together. So it's almost like a blur. It's like a very small blur. So if we bring this luminance up to about, let's say 50, okay? Now we have the luminance detail. And that is how much detail is in the noise that you're reducing. So if we bring this up, you can see that as we bring this up, we start to get more detail out of that noise, but we're fighting the reduction that we did with the noise reduction up here in the luminance section. That's because we're, we're telling it, okay, I know you reduced the noise here by blurring this a little bit, but now I need some detail resurrected there. And that's okay. We'll continue to fumble with these in a second here, okay? And by fumble, I mean, we'll, we'll get to know it. Let's go down here to color because one of the things that really is killing us right now is the color noise. And this slider right here, this color noise slider might just be the ticket in most cases. If you move this color noise up, look what happens. We're taking the color out of that noise. We're basically just telling it to desaturate all the color that's coming about in the noise. And that right there usually fixes up our noise pretty well and almost most of the time when I'm doing noise reduction like this sometimes I don't even take the luminance or the luminance detail up too high I just go right there to the color one and take out the color because sometimes I like the grainy feel that I get from that noise and and in actuality we used to call this stuff 
film grain. Okay, now we call it noise. So because it's called noise, it has a negative connotation. We got to get rid of it all of a sudden. But in reality, it's film grain. And higher ISOs back in the day when we had film meant more grainy photos. And sometimes people really aspired to have that grain in their images. I know I did when I was shooting with ISO 800 film. So let's zoom back in here to our test target and go back over some of these other adjustments here. So what you'll notice is that this is a textured wall. Okay, This is a textured wall, and there's also some highlights that are right here, some little pockets of highlights that are on this little telephone here. Like I said, this isn't the most beautiful image to, to work with, but it's great for this noise reduction tutorial. So let's come in here to the, the luminance contrast. I'm going to just go ahead and move down here a little bit. We move up the luminance contrast. Let's look right here. We're going to take an even deeper dive into this. As we move up that luminance contrast, look what happens. We're starting to pull some of the luminance detail out of the contrast in the image. So those little highlights that are reflecting off of this textured wall start to come about. Because sometimes when we're working with noise reduction, we can flatten things out in the process. Well, this luminance contrast adjustment, in the past, I thought it did nothing. But you have to zoom in really deep in order to see what it's doing here. So if we move this luminance contrast up to about the 50 mark, and we come up here and look at our telephone on the wall, Look at how we can see some of those details starting to come back, okay? So let's go ahead and fit in view and see what we've got here. Looks like it's, it's, it's all right, but let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more and look at the color detail and the color smoothness, okay? So color detail is how much detail is left in the colored noise as you move that up. So if we bring the color down, let's say to about right here, and we bring that color detail up, you're going to start to see that in these areas of noise here, let's zoom in real close. In these areas of noise where there's color noise, you can see that that color noise is getting a lot of detail, especially like right here on this one. We're zoomed in by 1600% right now. But look at the color detail. You can start to see how the color starts to get crunchier when that detail is higher. So what we really want to do is just really reduce that color noise that is in there. And here with color smoothness, this, when we have the color smoothed it down to zero, this is almost like a color blur where uh, you can see we still have some color here at 1600%. But when we move that color smoothness over, you start to see that that color starts to disappear. The problem with our color smoothness and our color sliders here is that sometimes that can actually reduce the saturation in our image when we're using them. So we do have to be a little bit careful with those as we're using. In this image, it's not that big of a deal at all. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. I know we're zooming in and zooming out here, but that gives us a good idea of what we're working with. Let's look at the preview. Here was the before and here's the after. We just really solidified that noise. We, we pulled it all together, but we didn't blur it to the point that it's not there anymore. We didn't take our luminance all the way up here and say, okay, get rid of that noise. Because look what happens when we do that. It really does blur our image instead of reduce the noise. And what we want to do here is not get rid of the noise, but it's reduce the noise. The keywords there, reduce the noise, because you're not really going to be able to get rid of it anyway. Okay, it's there. It's not going anywhere. But what can we do to reduce the effects of it? And this is looking pretty good like we have it right now. We can still pull out some detail here because if we look at this uh, test chart here, we can still pull some detail out of this test chart and we do that with the sharpening. So one of the things I wanted to tell you about here is the alt or option key, which is our best friend when we're doing anything in this noise reduction area. As a matter of fact, if we press alt or option, we click on luminance, it changes our image to a black and white image, which it helps. It's only doing it temporarily. It's just giving us a different view of our photograph and a grayscale photograph. And why is it helpful? Well, sometimes it can be difficult to see exactly what it is that we're doing when we have all that color stuff there. But when we press alter option, we move that luminance, it gives us a better idea because it takes um, something like, I don't know, 12 million colors and reduces it down to 256, which really helps us when we look at our noise reduction. But the same thing happens up here with sharpening. If we move the sharpening amount up, you can see that now we're sharpening all the little micro details in our image. We're pressing alter option on that to see our sharpening. And it doesn't look very good like that, but look at how much I can bring that sharpening up. I can bring it up to about 50. 
okay? And then I can go to the radius. I can press Alt or Option on the radius. And the radius shows me uh, just about how much is actually being affected by that sharpening. It takes the, the size of the pixel and it brings it up. So now we're at 0.5 pixels, essentially, if you look over there on the right-hand side. And now we're saying that the radius of this sharpening will encompass about three pixels. So it'll grow that sharpening by about three pixels. Let's bring that down to about here to the 1.2 mark. The detail slider, this is where things get kind of tricky. If you bring detail up, uh, it's gonna make, it's gonna sharpen up really quickly and really fast. We press alter option, you can see. But look what happens. We get some artifacting when we do that, that white and black artifacting, which kind of negates all the stuff that we did with our noise reduction. So let's just bring that down. We don't need to bring in that detail. But one of the really key things I want to show you here is the masking. Okay, I'm going to zoom out here, fit and view. And we press the mask and we move this over. It doesn't look like it's doing anything, does it? It doesn't at all. But if we press Alt or Option, we click on that mask and we move it over, now look what happens. This is our grayscale image, but this is a grayscale mask. So anything that is black here is not going to be affected by the sharpening. The noise reduction is still happening in those areas, but it's not sharpening those areas. So we can really get finite with what our sharpening is doing. We only want our sharpening to affect our detail areas anyway, which would be that test target and maybe some of the areas around uh, outlines or something like that. Here, we're sharpening the entire photograph. Here, we're sharpening just the detailed outline areas of our image. So now if we zoom into that test target, we're zoomed in the test target, we press Alter Option, you can see what we're doing here. Here is where you can maybe increase your radius, maybe increase your sharpening amount, maybe increase the detail here, because now it's not affecting the noise, it's only affecting areas that we have masked off, which are going to be your areas of detail or your areas of outline. So here's the overall before, and here's the after. We've reduced that noise, successfully reduced that noise in a controlled fashion. And it looks much better than it did before, okay? Now, if you look at these noise reduction settings, these are actually really high. For most cases, you won't have to take your noise reduction to this extreme. But if you looked at what we did here, if we go back to the very basic area of this image, we were able to pull out two whole stops of data from the shadowy areas in our image. And then on top of that, we also increased what we could see in those shadows. So in those shadow areas, we're probably increasing this to about three whole stops of light. So we're recovering a lot here. And the, in the process of recovering that, we have to go into the noise reduction settings here and really get in the, in, the, in the nitty gritty of this noise reduction. In most cases, you won't be taking your noise reduction this high. This is showing you how to reduce the noise on extremely high ISOs or those areas of shadow that you resurrect in the basic adjustments of Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. So don't just slam those sliders all over the place. Do things for a reason. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up, share it, comment on it, maybe tell us some of the settings that you use for noise reduction. And finally, subscribe. If you subscribe to this and you hit the little notification button there, you'll get updates when new videos hit my YouTube channel. I just wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial and expand your horizons and your creative passion. Thank you very much.